Hi everyone, welcome to this GCSE Higher Revision video. There's 27 days to go to your GCSE Maths exam. And today we're going to be focusing on the topic of algebraic proof. Now I really like this topic. Um, and if you go to Code Maths Revision Cards, card number 93B, so one for you, and it goes through how to approach these algebraic proof questions. Now I'm going to go through in this video some algebraic proof questions, and there'll be something for you to try as well. So remember to press pause and to try those questions. So let's get started. Okay, so today we're going to be looking at algebraic proof. So in this video, we're going to go through four questions. Feel free to pause and to try these questions yourself if you want to. So for instance, now you could pause this video and try this question and see if you can get the right answer yourself. Alternatively, you could watch me do one, and then there's going to be one for you to try. You can then watch me do the next one, and then there's one for you to try. So it's however you want to do this video. Okay, so our first question says, prove n plus 10, close bracket squared, subtract n plus 5, all squared, is always a multiple of 5. Okay, so if you want to try this question, press pause now and try it yourself. Okay, so if I was to do this question, well, we've got a bracket squared, so I'm going to expand this bracket. So remember that whenever you square bracket, you're multiplying it by itself. So we've got n plus 10 multiplied by n plus 10. And if we expand our brackets, n times n is n squared. n times 10, so n times n is n squared. n times 10 will be plus 10n. 10 times n is plus 10n. And 10 times 10 is 100, so plus 100. And when we simplify that, we get n squared plus 20n plus 100. So that's what we get when we expand our first brackets. And then we're going to subtract n plus 5 squared. So let's expand n plus 5. So n plus 5 multiplied by itself, n plus 5. And when we expand that, we get n times n is n squared. n times 5 is plus 5n. 5 times n is plus 5n again. And 5 times 5 is 25. And when we simplify that, we get n squared plus, and then we've got 5n plus 5n, which is 10n plus 25. So we've expanded our first bracket, so we've squared it. We've expanded our second bracket, we've squared it. And now we just need to take them away. So we need to do n squared plus 20n plus 100, take away n squared, 10n, and 25. So we need to take it all away. So let's write that out. So we've got n squared plus 20n plus 100, subtract. And I'm going to put our this all in our brackets because I'm subtracting it all. So n squared plus 10n plus 25. So we're subtracting all of that. Okay. And um, be careful not to just write minus n squared and then plus 10n because you're subtracting the whole thing. So we've got n squared take away n squared. Well, there's just going to be zero. We've got 20n subtract 10n and 20n subtract 10n would be 10n. And then we've got 100 take away 25 and 100 take away 25 is 75. So if we do n plus 10 all squared take away n plus 5 all squared, we would get 10n plus 75. Now, we've been asked to show it's always a multiple of 5, so we want to show this is always a multiple of 5. So to do that, we're going to factorize this. So we're going to take out 5 as a factor. And if we do that, we get 5 bracket 2n plus 15. And as you can see, we can factorize this and take 5 out. So we've got 5 times something. And because it's 5 times something, it's a multiple of 5. So let's write that down. And that's it. I've just written, therefore, a multiple of 5 because we've been able to take 5 out. We've been able to factorize it as 5 times something. OK, let's have a look at a question now for you to try. So here's a question for you to try. We've got 5n plus 2, close bracket squared, subtract 5n minus 1, close bracket squared. And you've been asked to prove it's always a multiple of 3. So can you prove this is always a multiple of 3? OK, so to begin with, let's expand our brackets. So we would have 5n plus 2, close brackets, 5n plus 2, because we're squaring, we're multiplying the bracket by itself. So 5n times 5n would be 25n squared, 25n squared. We've got 5n times 2, that's going to be plus 10n. We've got 2 times 5n, that's plus 10n. And we've got 2 times 2, that's plus 4. And then if we simplify this, we get 25n squared plus 20n plus 4. OK, so we've squared our first bracket. Now let's square our second bracket. So we've got 5n minus 1 multiplied by 5n minus 1. We're going to multiply that bracket by itself. So 5n times 5n is 25n squared. 5n multiplied by negative 1 will be minus 5n. Minus 1 times 5n will be minus 5n. And minus 1 times minus 1 will be positive 1 or plus 1. And then if we simplify this, we've got 25n squared subtract 10n plus one. And that's what we get whenever we expand that bracket or square that bracket. Now what we're going to do is we need to take these away from each other. So we've got our 25 n squared plus 20 n plus four. And we're subtracting. I'm going to put all of this in a bracket because we're subtracting the whole thing. So subtract 25 n squared minus 10 n plus one. So we're subtracting all of that. So we've got 25 n squared subtract 25 n squared. So that's zero. We've got 20 n subtract negative 10 n. Now when we subtract a negative, we're going to be adding on. So 20n subtract negative 10n will be 20n plus 10n, which be 30n. And then we've got 4 
subtract 1. And 4 subtract 1 is 3, so plus 3. So we've got 30n plus 3. We want to show it's always a multiple of 3, so we can factorize this. So 3 brackets, and then we've got 10n plus 1. And because we've been able to factorize it and take 3 out, we can then therefore say it's always a multiple of 3. So let's do that. And that is, I've just written down, therefore always a multiple of 3, because it's 3 times something. Okay, now just before we have a look at our next question, we'll talk a little bit about odd and even numbers whenever we're dealing with algebraic proof questions. Now, if we let n be a number, that could be odd or it could be even, because it could be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. But if I had 2n, 2 times a number, so 2 times 1 would be 2, 2 times 2 would be 4, 2 times 3 would be 6, 2 times 4 would be 8, and so on. 2n is always even, so that is always even. So 2n is always even. So because 2n is always even, if I'm ever asked to use an even number, I would use 2n. And likewise, if I was asked to use an odd number, so like in this case, we're going to be talking about odd numbers, I wouldn't use n because that could be odd or could be even. If I multiply by 2, 2n, that's going to be even. So if I add 1, 2n plus 1, that would be an odd number, because if you do 2 times a number, that's even. And if you add 1, that's always going to be odd. So that would be always odd. So if I'm ever doing a question and I need to use an even number, I would use 2n. If I wanted an odd number, I would use 2n plus 1. Now, some people use 2n minus 1. They take one away. I like to do 2n plus 1. I'm a positive type of guy. I like to add one. Um, so I would tend to use 2n plus 1 to be an odd number, and I would use 2n for even numbers. Okay, So that's something that would be quite useful whenever you're dealing with algebraic proof questions. Okay, so let's have a look at this question. So our question says, prove the sum of four consecutive odd numbers is always a multiple of eight. So in this question, we need four consecutive odd numbers. So let's find an odd number. Well, I would use 2n plus 1 because 2n is even, so 2n plus 1 would be odd. So that would be my first odd number. So that's the first number that I'm going to use, my first odd number. Now in terms of my next odd number, because it's four consecutive odd numbers, the next number would be 2n plus 2. That's going to be even, 2n plus 2. So my next odd number would be 2n plus 3. So 2n plus 3 would be my next odd number. The next number, 2n plus 4, would be even. So 2n plus 5 would be another odd number. 2n plus 6 would be even. And 2n plus 7 would be odd. So if I was asked to write down four consecutive odd numbers, I would write down 2n plus 1, 2n plus 3, 2n plus 5, and 2n plus 7. And if you were to substitute values for n here, such as 1 or 2 or 3 or 4 and so on, you'll find that you get consecutive odd numbers. Okay, now we've been asked to show that there's some the sum, what we get when we add them up. So let's add them all up and see what we get. So let's add up our 2n plus 1, our 2n plus 3, our 2n plus 5, and our 2n plus 7. So let's add those up and see what we get. So 2n plus 2n plus 2n plus 2n, that would be 8n. And then we've got 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. Well, 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 5 is 9, plus 7 is 16, so plus 16. So that means that if we add up four consecutive odd numbers, we would get 8n plus 16. Now, we've been asked to show this was always a multiple of 8. Well, that's great, but this can be factorised. We can take 8 out as a factor. So that'd be equal to 8 bracket n plus 2, close brackets. And we've factorised it. That's 8 times something. And because it's 8 multiplied by something, that means it's a multiple of 8. So let's just write that down. And that's it. So I've just written down, therefore, a multiple of 8. And that's it. And just remember that I like to use 2n for even numbers and 2n plus 1 for odd numbers. Okay, so here's a question I have for you to try. So the question says, prove the sum of three consecutive even integers is divisible by three. So I want you to pause this video now and see if you can do this question yourself. Okay, so if I was to do this question, the first thing I noticed was we had three consecutive even integers. So let's choose an even integer. So 2n, that would be even. Now, in terms of our next one, because it's consecutive even integers, 2n plus 1 would be odd, so 2n plus 2 would be our next even integer. And then 2n plus 3 would be odd, so 2n plus 4 would be our next one. I want to prove the sum, so we're going to add those up, so we're going to add these up, and we're going to see what we get. So we're going to add them together. 2n plus 2n plus 2n, that's 6n. And then we've got 2 plus 4, that's going to be plus 6. So we've got 6n plus 6. Now I've been asked to show this is divisible by 3, so let's take 3 out as a factor. So we get 3, bracket, and then if we factorise this, we would get 2n plus 2, close brackets. And because it's 3 multiplied by something, therefore it's divisible by 3, so let's write that down. And that's it. So today's video, we've looked at algebraic proof. I hope you found it useful. Now, I would highly recommend the practice questions today because with algebraic proof, the more practice you get at these questions, the better you become at them. So I'd really recommend the practice questions today. So have a go at those. And that's it. So in this video, we've looked at how to approach some typical algebraic proof questions. And obviously, with something like algebraic proof, they might change how the question is given. So have a look in the description below and, you know, have a look at those practice questions because they'd be quite useful for you as well. 
So keep up the hard work. You're doing really well. There's 27 days to go into your GCSE Maps exam. So keep up going to revision sessions, trying hard in lessons, uh, doing, pass, uh, doing practice papers and loads of past papers and stuff as well. And keep up the hard work. You're doing really, really well. See you tomorrow at Freddy Club. Cheers. Bye.